welcome to this another session of uh, Arbor and Engineering. This is the second session of chapter number 7 that is Arbor Maintenance. We have studied the topic of beach profile and coastal protection works in the previous session. Now in this session we will be learning about an important topic that is dredging. Dredging word we have already come across previously but now we will be learning in detail various topics which are associated with dredging. So let us begin with this new session. So first of all the definition of dredging that is the operation or technique of removing material from bed to increase the depth of water. Silting, uh, we already know about silting means the deposition of sediments. So as the harbour is constructed in the water body, constantly silting will take place that is sediments will get deposited in the seabed. So in the bottom there will be a certain thickness of the sediments and due to the deposition of sediments the total navigable depth of the harbour will get reduced. So to maintain the navigable depth we have to remove the excessive sediments we have been deposited. So that is the reason behind dredging that is removal of the deposits and that process of removing of those materials, the sediments is termed as dredging. Makes harbour deep in, enough to make navigation suitable as I already explained. Next are the various objectives of dredging. First is the creation of artificial depth for new harbour. That is, wherever we want to create a new harbour, at that point the rocks or the sediments which have been already deposited will have to be removed first from that specific point or location. So in dredging, we can remove those excessive sediments and the rocks which have been positioned in that harbour and we can sort of attain a navigable depth. Maintaining navigable depth already discussed. Reclamation of low lying areas, now this point <coughs> indicates that if we want to increase the level of a certain landfill or if we want to increase the fertility of a certain land area, then uh, the reclamation that is the material which we have obtained through dredging can be used for increasing the level or for increasing the fertility for a barren land. So reclaiming the low lying areas that is related to the increasing the level in construction of sea walls and dikes. Now dikes is sort of an embankment which is constructed parallel to the shore and its purpose is to make sure that uh, the effect of water is uh, not on the adjacent area which is near to it. So basically dike is, uh, if, we, if I give an example of a water stream or a water body which is moving, dikes is constructed parallelly on both the sides. It is an embankment structure and its purpose is basically flood control. That is whenever the water level increases due to the embankment, the water will not spill on the land which is adjacent to it. So if there are villages which are adjacent to the water body, then by construction of dikes, that is earth filling, the water will not spill into those villages. Sea walls we have already seen in the previous chapter. Replacing unsuitable material with the desired material, that is as I gave an example of agricultural land, that if uh, the material is not good enough, then we can use this dredge material uh, instead of those unsuitable material. Next is classification of dredging works. So basically the dredging work is classified into three types. First is the capital dredging, which is initial removal of bed material at time of building the harbour. So the one first time dredging which is done when the new harbour is going to be built, it is termed as capital dredging. Material to be dredged varies from sea to rock. Now whenever we are constructing the harbour costly, then there are chances that we will have to meet with rocks or the boulders which are the large size particles. So basically in the dredging first time, there is a high possibility that we will have to remove the rocks. So in capital dredging, more or less uh, rocks are encountered and uh, even silt can be uh, encountered as well at the time of carrying out the dredging operation. Next is the maintenance dredging. Maintenance what we already know is related to uh, doing the work in a, at a certain fixed interval. After harvest construction is begun, due to tidal effects, sealed material gets deposited 
that is silting which we have already discussed. To maintain depth of water, generally silt has to be removed because if silt is not removed, then due to the excessive deposit, it will reduce the total navigable depth. Recurring work required to remove bed material year after year. So it is basically a work which has to be done constantly, which has to be done at a certain interval of time, uh, which is that basic time period is fixed and uh, that will be removal of the seeds which have been deposited. Sundry dredging that is sort of a sundry related to the miscellaneous work, which is basically done for the reclamation purpose, that is increasing the level of low lying area or using the sediments for increasing the fertility. Uses of dredge material, now this topic deals with that the dredge material which we have obtained after the uh, carrying out operation of dredging, where can it be used. Land reclamation, this point has already been discussed. Improving fertility of land by spreading the dredge material, this point also we have discussed. Constructing the embedments, this also I gave an example of dye. And last is to obtain sand and aggregate that is if they are needed, then by carrying out the dredging operation we will uh, sort of gather and we can use, make use of the sand which we have obtained or the natural aggregates which we have already obtained. Types of dredgers, now basically machine which is used for removing the bed material that is for carrying out the operation of dredging is termed as dredger. Basically there are four types of dredger. So dredger is the equipment which is used for carrying out dredging operation. Three amounts four are mechanical dredger one is a hydraulic dredger, so that is also an important question, that is the types of the dredgers. First is the bucket ladder dredger, now the word used are bucket and ladder because these both are the components in this type of dredger. Bucket which has been shown, bucket we already know and also ladder which is a common term which has been shown here. So now first of all let us understand the mechanism of this dredger. Basically first of all the ladder, uh, this is the inclined structure which has been shown is placed up to that point where dredging is needed to be carried out. So if I need to carry out dredging at this specific point, then the ladder has to be placed up to that point. On the ladder, there is an endless chain. So this is a chain which is uh, placed on the ladder and with the chain are the buckets which have been connected, which have a cutting edge. So these are not the normal bucket. These are the buckets which have cutting edge normally made up of steel. So they are provided with that cutting edge because ultimately they have to cut these uh, deposits which are placed at the sea bottom. And there is a vessel here uh, in which the material which has been dug, which has been excavated will be ultimately deposited or collected. So let us see the mechanism. First of all, uh, the ladder is sort of positioned at that point as I told that where we need to carry out the excavation. So it is immersed into the water up to that point. Then first of all, there are n number of buckets. So the number of buckets, uh, the buckets will be placed in succession with each other. So firstly, the buckets are empty. Then they move towards this point which they want they have to excavate. So by providing the force, they are uh, made to cut the deposits. So they will move forward after filling up themselves, that is the bucket will cut the deposit and that deposit will get deposited inside the bucket. Then that filled bucket will come upwards and it will empty the sediments in the here a container will be placed where that sediments will be emptied. So firstly the bucket is empty, it moves downward, it will cut the deposit and it will sort of collect the deposit inside it, then here the filled bucket will move up and it will empty the deposits inside the container which will be placed in the vessel. So this is the mechanism and basically this treasure is placed on a pontoon structure that is a floating platform on which this treasure will be ultimately placed. So let us discuss the theoretical portion. Consists of endless chain of buckets that is the successive uh, n number of buckets are placed mounted and running round the ladder through the endless chain. Ladder can be lowered or raised, that is it is basically have to be lowered at that point where we need to carry out the excavation work. Buckets are provided with cutting edge, 
so that the deposits can be uh, cut or excavated easily. Dug material is brought up as the chain moves around and dumped in the hopper. So whichever material has been cut, that is uh, brought up after that uh, cutting due to the age, that is the age of the bucket, and it is moved around through the chain and dumped in the hopper, that is the container which is placed inside the vessel. Suitable for soft ground and sand. Why? Because if there is a heavy rock, then that cannot be excavated through this bucket later. So it is basically used for uh, soft soil and for sands. Used when depth is not large because uh, ultimately we have to take the ladder up to that point. So we cannot uh, increase the length of the ladder as per our wish. So basically uh, it has, to, has a certain limitation regarding the length and it is used when the depth is not large. So next are the advantages and disadvantages. So firstly discussing the advantages. Ability to dredge variety of material from clay to sand. So clay, silt, sand can be easily excavated here. Materials like scrap iron or wires can also be removed. That is waste material like iron or wires can be excavated. Buckets can be changed as per the condition. So depending upon what material are we going to excavate, we can sort of give modification to the bucket. Disadvantages is the poor stability because as the treasure is placed on the pontoon which is a platform which is on the floating uh, which is floating on the water body so if there is wave action or tide action or fluctuation in water level then due to that the platform will uh, sort of become unstable and so it will affect the stability of the treasure as well mounted on pontoon and affected by wave action that is the same point first and second point both are correlated Noisy operation, the operation of the bucket ladder dredger is uh, very noisy as compared to all other dredgers. So this is the view for a bucket ladder dredger. This is the platform on which the dredger is placed. These are the buckets with the cutting edge which will be first of all empty. They will excavate the material, they will bring the material along with them and they will deposit it in the container or in the hopper. So these are the n number of buckets. And this operation will be going on continuously. Second is the deeper dredger. Now uh, let us understand here the labels in the functioning. Boom is uh, for giving the alignment or for sort of fixing the direction where we are going to carry out the dredging operation. So first of all uh, we have to move towards that point or in that direction. So boom basically gives the alignment or the direction for carrying out the operation. Deeper stick is perpendicular to the boom as we can see and it is a connection between boom and the bucket. Bucket uh, is basically for filling up or for uh, that in which the excavated material will be filled. Bursting cable is for raising or lowering the bucket. So these are the functions of these labels. Pontoon as I told is a platform, floating platform on which the dredger will be placed. Now what is the mechanism here is that first of all the bucket is empty then by the use of boom it is taken in that direction where the dredging operation has to be carried out. Then by hoisting cable it is lowered into the specific seabed where we are going to carry out the dredging and the bucket is made to cut the deposit that is cut is given into the seabed and ultimately through that cut the sediments get filled in the bucket then again through the hosting cable the bucket is raised it is taken to that point where it has to be deposited and then the sediments are deposited at that specific point and again it is brought to its original point so these are the various operations 4 to 5 operations in one cycle of a deeper treasure so now talking about the theoretical portion, parts include boom, deeper stick and hoisting cable, already explained the meaning of these components. Deeper stick runs through the middle of the boom and it is perpendicular to the boom. Bucket is attached at the end of deeper stick for filling up the excavated material. Bucket is moved up or down with the help of hoisting cable. Who 
boom is capable of swinging through the angle of 180 degrees. So basically, it will control, be controlling the alignment or the direction. Dredger is very powerful and capable of excavating hard soil, boulder, and rocks. Now, one point which we discussed in the bucket ladder dredger is that it cannot excavate rocks. So whenever we have to carry out the dredging operation of rocks, then the suitable type is the deeper dredger because depending upon the size of the bucket, we can fill in it with the rock or the large size sediments. Next, talking about the advantages, it can handle large rocks. For dredging in steep condition, that is if the sediments are steep, then a bucket ladder might not be that much efficient. So in that situation, we can make use of deeper dredger. Disadvantage is the limited depth because its depth is controlled by the length of the deeper steep. Whatever is the length of deeper steep, it can excavate up to that depth. So uh, there is a limitation to the length and so it can carry out the operation up to a certain depth only. Next is the output point. Now if we compare the bucket ladder type dredger and the deeper dredger, then in the bucket ladder type, as there are n number of buckets in one cycle, that is if we talk about a single first bucket which is empty and it completes the cycle of excavation deposition and again returns to its original position then that one cycle uh, will have more output as compared to one cycle of deeper treasure because here there is a single bucket yes its volume can be varied but the amount of output of the bucket ladder will be more as compared to deeper treasure in one cycle now this is the view for deeper dredger, this is the bucket which is ultimately excavating the deposits, this is the stick which is perpendicular, these are the hoisting cables and next is the boom which will be ultimately deciding its alignment or direction and with whatever material is excavated it will be sort of deposited in a container. This is the view of deeper treasure. Third mechanical treasure is the grab treasure. So here again boom that is for deciding the direction and the alignment. Here a cable is given and a grab has been mentioned. Now grab is the construction equipment of clamshell. So these are the cutting jaw or teeth and this is the cable. Pontoon is the again floating platform structure. Now let us understand the mechanism for the operation. First of all, the grab is in its original position. Then by the use of boom, it is taken to that specific point or in the direction where excavation is going to be carried out. Then it is given a free fall, that is the jaw are open and it is given a free fall. So it will immerse or it will go forcefully towards the point where the excavation is to be carried out. Then the pull will be applied to the cable and after applying the pull, the jaws will get closed and they will fill in the excavated material. Then the cable will be raised, that is the grab will be raised and it will be taken to the point where it is to be deposited. Then again the pull will be applied to the cable, it will open the jaw and it will release the sediments and lastly the grab will be brought to the original position again. So these are the 4 to 5 operations in the grab dredger. This is the clamshell equipment in which the cutting jaw or teeth are connected with the cable. Most common type of mechanical dredger that is the grab dredger. Clamshell is suspended by cable from the boom. Grab can be opened or closed that is first of all it is open then it is given free fall then it is closed it will fill the excavated material it is taken to the place where it has to be deposited and then again it will be opened, the sediments will be released and it will be brought to the original position. Grab is allowed to fall by gravity in open position till it buries itself in the ground, that is the free fall is given. Jaws are closed by pulling up and enclosed marks of earth is lifted, it is the operation which I have already explained. Grab is swung to the conventional position and material is discharged, that is at the specific container where it has been placed for the specific point for deposition, it is taken to that point and the material is discharged. Suitable for all types of soils, so it can also handle rocks up to a certain capacity and clay or silt or gravel.
sample set folders can also be handled. So mostly it can handle all types of soils, whether it is firm soil, steep soil, or whether it is a loose soil. Ability to dredge close to the quay walls or the jetty. Now this is a very specific point because uh, whenever we want to carry out the dredging operation adjacent to the loading and loading terminal, then uh, if we talk about bucket ladder dredger or if we talk about the deeper dredger, then they need a certain amount of room or space because in bucket ladder dredger, we have to place the ladder in the deeper dredger, we have to see the uh, deeper stick because it is sort of an inclined structure. But if we talk about grab dredger, here it can be directly given free fall vertically. So there is no need of any room or space which is needed in the first two types. So whenever the excavation is to be carried out in the vicinity and adjacent to this uh, way walls, jetty or pier that is a loading and loading terminal, then in that case specifically grab dredger is very useful. Advantages is that it can be used in all types of soil that is uh, steep soil or it is loose soil. Ability to dredge close to quay and jetties is the point which was discussed in the uh, previous slide. Disadvantage is the low output because again uh, the output will depend upon the size of the grab which can only be sort of extended up to a certain limit. So if we compare with bucket ladder dredger as was the case in deeper dredger where it was a single bucket here there is a single grab. So, if we compare with bucket ladder dredger, then in one cycle, the output will be not that much high. So, this is the view for uh, grab dredger. This is the clamp shell which is connected with the cable. This is the dredger which is placed on the pontoon. The free fall is given and this is uh, the boom which will be ultimately deciding the direction or the alignment. And here the free fall will be given to the clamp shell. The material which has been excavated will be deposited off in the container which will be placed on the pontoon. Next is the hydraulic dredger. The first three dredgers which we have seen are the mechanical dredger and this is the hydraulic dredger. So let us see the labels first of all. Beginning from this point, cutter head is basically employed when we are going to excavate the rock and its purpose is make fragments of the rock. So as rock is a, a sort of a big structure, then due to the cutter head, it is converted into fragments or into pieces which can pass through this uh, sort of we can say the structure which has been constructed. So to make the sediments pass through this pipe, the fragments are made of rock. So whenever we are not uh, encountering rock or we are carrying out the operation for clay or silt, then uh, the cutter head will not be needed. Suction pipe is basically for uh, sucking that is the air will be sucked and uh, through that the mass will be moved that is the excavation will be carried out. Treasure that is the sort of uh, that is the main sort of body where ultimately the excavated material will be filled up. Pump that is here again a pump will be employed, employed which will sort of raise the sediments which have been placed, it will be sucked up and it will be moved towards this pipe. So by pump, the material which has been dredged or which has been excavated will be made to move through the pipe which is ultimately connected to the shore. So all the material which is being excavated will ultimately move towards the shore through the pipe by the use of the pump. Next are the pontoon which are the floating platform which are for support of the dredger and there is a walking spot which is basically also for support but for support from the sea bed or the foundation. So pontoon are the floating platforms which provide support from the water then by floating on that surface and walking spur is up to the sea bed or up to the foundation and its purpose is also to provide support and as the word walking is used. So the position of this part can be changed from one point to another point. So as we have completed the operation in a specific location and we want to carry out the operation further ahead, then we can change the point or the location of the spot. So these are the various labels uh, related to the hydraulic treasure and the main uh, functioning here is by sucking the, uh, carrying out the sucking operation, the excavation is being carried out and cutter head is employed when we are handling the rocks. 
soil is removed uh, by suction through the pump. If material to be removed is hard, then the rotating cutter is employed at the end of suction pipe, as we have seen, which is not needed when we are handling the smaller size sediments. Maybe steam or electrically driven, that is the mechanism can be electrically driven or through steam, that is the treasure itself. It gives higher output because there is a continuous functioning, is a continuous operation and there is no such uh, limitation as there is a one bucket or there is a single grave or there is a uh, sort of uh, regarding the dimension of any of that equipment. So here the output will be very high due to uh, removal of those limitations. Next is the choice of treasure. So as there are various types of treasures which we have seen, on what basis are we supposed to choose that at this specific situation, this type of treasure should be used. So first is the nature of material. That is, we know that if rock is to be excavated, then the bucket ladder treasure can't be used. And if hydraulic treasure is used, then the cutter has to be provided. So what is the nature of the material? Deeper treasure can handle rock in a much better manner. Cost and availability of the equipment, that is the specific equipment, what is the cost, what is the availability, if we, when we want to carry out the operation, it is available or not, so depending upon that, we have to choose the treasure. Wind, wave and sea action, now the mechanical treasures, that is the first three treasures, all are placed on the pontoon, that is the floating platform, so the effect of wind, wave and sea action will instabilize the pontoon and also it will create instability in the treasure itself. But in case of the hydraulic treasure, it has the higher amount of stability because it is not placed on the pontoon. So depending upon this intensity of this natural phenomena, uh, we have to choose which type of treasure are we supposed to use. Next is the disposal options, that is the material which has been excavated, how it can be deposited. So there are basically three methods. First is the open water disposal. Now, in this case, whichever material has been dredged, which has been excavated, is sort of deposited in the water body after going into the deep water, that is after reaching the certain sort of uh, specific point. Dredge material is disposed in the sea itself. So, basically, we are uh, going to the deep waters and there we are depositing. It can be a free fall or also a uh, Compaction can be done, it can be placed in layers depending upon the depth of the water. So basically one point here is that we have to study the effect of the currents, we have to study the effect of the waves because uh, it should not be such a case that the material which has been dredged due to the movement of water, that dredged material uh, comes to the shore. So we have to study the effects of currents, waves and we have to see that the effects should not be such that after disposing of the material in the water body, all the sediments uh, move towards the shore. So that should not be the case. That is a specific point related to this. Shoreline disposal, that is along the shore, uh, sort of uh, layers of the sediments are formed. A uh, bit of compaction is being done and uh, uh, along the shore, that is basically the land portion, the sediments are deposited uh, layer by layer and sort of uh, the thickness can be Conventional disposal, dredge material is transported to low lying area for dumping. So here basically a specific point is chosen where the dumping will be done and there the material is taken, transported and layer by layer that material through compaction by use of heavy compactors, layer by layer the deposition of the sediments are being done. So here uh, specifically uh, an area is allocated that it might be a low lying area where sort of uh, embankment is needed or where filling is needed or depending upon uh, what is uh, the scenario which is far away from the locality and there the sediments which have been dredged are taken, transported and layer by layer through compaction, through use of heavy compactors, they are placed in sort of the filling of the embankment or is being done. So this is the end of uh, chapter number 7 that is the harbour maintenance. We have studied in detail regarding the various topics related to dredging. From the next session we will be beginning with chapter number 3 that is nature phenomena.